Difficulty losing weight when you have hypothyroidism is probably one of the most frustrating symptoms that both men and women experience. But today, I'm talking about two hormones that don't always get the respect that they deserve. Today, we're talking about leptin and we're talking about reverse T3. And these are very, very often common culprits of weight gain simply because of the role that these hormones have in regulating your body's metabolism. And chances are, if this is happening to you, these hormone biomarkers are worth looking into. Now, if you've struggled with weight gain or weight loss resistance, uh, despite diet and exercise, uh, it's time to consider leptin resistance and elevated levels of reverse T3 as some of the possible culprits. Now, in previous videos and articles, I've talked a lot about reverse T3. I've talked a lot about the reasons that people have elevated levels of reverse T3. I've talked about the T3, reverse T3 ratio. But really, just as a refresher, your thyroid gland makes T4, it makes T3, and normally it should only make very, very small amounts of reverse T3, right? T4 is the inactive thyroid hormone. Uh, T3 is the active thyroid hormone that is really responsible for your body's metabolism, right? So when we say metabolism, really metabolism is the process by which your body converts the food, uh, what you eat, and essentially what you drink into energy. And your metabolism, of course, is influenced by your thyroid gland. Now, controlling your metabolism is really one of the key functions that your thyroid gland is really responsible for. And with people who have underactive thyroid glands, um, this is something that's becoming increasingly common to see both the leptin resistance and the high levels of reverse T3. And what I will tell you is that over the last few years, uh, I've been seeing more and more patients with high levels of reverse T3 and more and more patients having leptin resistance. Now, there are a few reasons for this, right? One of the reasons for high levels of reverse T3 is sometimes due to intermittent fasting, right? Or in some cases, it's due to uh, low carb diets or very, very low carb diets. Uh, another reason I see this happening is uh, restrictive diets, right? These are where patients are on like, let's say a AIP diet for too long, or maybe they're on a low oxalate diet. Maybe they're on a low histamine diet. Maybe they're on a low FODMAP diet or an elemental diet or a biphasic diet. And in the case of people who have SIBO, this really doesn't come as any surprise, especially with people that have SIBO and thyroid problems, right? People with thyroid disease and even Hashimoto's they often struggle with weight gain. They often struggle with IBS. They often struggle with SIBO. They often struggle with histamine intolerance. And so the diets that they go on are the very diets that in some cases can make their thyroid condition worse, okay? Now these diets are all very restrictive. And in the short term, they don't pose a problem. But for many, many patients, they embark upon these diets without proper guidance and they stay on them for just too long a period of time. And so this becomes a threat. It becomes a stressor to the body, right? Because the body is, is now being deprived of nutrients and vitamins and minerals and amino acids, all the things that your body needs for normal function and tissue repair, right? So these diets can be seen as a stressor to the body's uh, adrenal glands, to the body's pancreas, which helps regulate blood sugar. And of course, this in turn all has an impact on your metabolic rate. Right? Essentially, as an attempt to preserve energy, preserve that metabolism, your body will increase the levels of reverse T3. Again, because it's trying to conserve, it's trying to preserve that energy. And that's what high levels of reverse T3 do. High levels of reverse T3 can cause weight gain uh, for that reason. Right Now, if you don't know uh, some of the reasons uh, behind reverse T3, what I will tell you is you can watch some of my previous uh, videos that I've done on YouTube. There's a lot of articles that I have on my website that are posted uh, about this particular topic. Uh, I also have a, uh, if you're interested in learning more, uh, what I will tell you is that I have a reverse T3 uh, or a T3 reverse T3 calculator that if you have those values, both uh, either T3 or free T3 as well as your reverse T3, you can plug those values into my thyroid calculator and it can tell you where your levels are and, and also uh, why those levels are important, right? There's a nice video that kind of explains that. Again, I'll, I'll leave that link in the description box. Now, the other hormone uh, that can be a culprit in weight gain is, again, like I mentioned earlier, is leptin, right? Now, if you've never heard of leptin, leptin is another key hormone that regulates metabolism. How many calories you eat, how many calories you burn, how much fat you store. 
Uh, sometimes leptin is called the satiety hormone, and sometimes it's called the starvation hormone, right? Just depending on its levels and what it's doing within your body. Now, the interesting thing to know about leptin is that it's actually produced by your body's fat cells, right? So the more, the more fat you have, the more leptin you produce. And when leptin levels uh, are not where they belong, leptin tells your brain that you've had enough fat, uh, enough fat stored. So what happens is you don't need to eat anymore, all right? There's a sufficient amount of food. There's a sufficient amount of food being converted into energy. And this is really how uh, leptin gets its name, the satiety hormone. It Essentially, it tells your brain enough, stop eating, right? But that's not all leptin does, right? Leptin also works in concert with your thyroid gland, right? Leptin increases thyroid stimulating hormone levels, that's your TSH levels, and which also helps, by the way, in using up those excess calories. But here's the problem. The more fat you carry, the more leptin resistant you become. In fact, not only is hypothyroidism associated with leptin resistance, so is insulin resistance and diabetes. So blood sugar problems are another problem for people with thyroid disease, right? Leptin resistance occurs when, essentially when your brain no longer is listening to the leptin signal, right, from your body. Now remember what I said, leptin tells your brain when to stop eating. It tells your body that you have enough calories. But in the cases when we're dealing with leptin resistance, your brain thinks it's starving, right? So now you're always hungry. You're always wanting to snack on something. You always want to eat something. You eat and you don't feel full. But again, the food you eat is now more prone to being stored as more and more fat. So it really becomes this vicious cycle, right? Um, the more fat you put on, the more leptin resistant you become. The more you eat, the more you slow down your thyroid. And the end result, of course, is the hypothyroidism. It's the low T4 and low T3 levels. It's the high levels of reverse T3. It's the obesity, it's the weight gain, it's the insulin resistance, it's the high cholesterol, it's the high blood sugar, right? Because we know that hyperglycemia is also, again, part of that insulin resistance, uh, leptin resistance puzzle, right? So the effect of leptin resistance on weight gain can be summarized by the following, right? We have the low TSH, that leads to low T4 thyroid hormone, uh, it leads to low T3 thyroid hormone, we also see uh, in blood work where the patient now has elevated reverse T3 levels. Maybe they have the symptoms of increased appetite. They have the increased insulin resistance. They have the increased fat storage, right? Especially uh, in the back, the back fat, the belly fat, the abdominal fat, central, uh, that central obesity, right? That's very characteristic of insulin resistance. And of course, from a blood work standpoint, uh, we have an increase in all of your bad cholesterol markers, right? We know uh, that HDLs, which are typically your good cholesterol, these go down. Your LDL cholesterol, which is typically your bad cholesterol, those go up. We see the total cholesterol go, go up. We can see triglycerides go up, right? So all of those bad cholesterol markers essentially go up. So I know we covered a lot of information today, so let me leave you with a few closing thoughts as, as we talk about uh, insulin resistance and uh, reverse T3. Number one is if you're struggling with weight gain and you've been on various diets like the ones that I've mentioned, uh, it might be time to consider the possibility of high levels of reverse T3 as well as high levels of leptin. Now, the good thing about all this is that both of these tests are, are very easy to run. These can be done in your blood. You don't have to do any kind of special testing. You can have these done at LabCorp. You can have these done at Quest. I mean, they're very, very easy to do, to have run. Um, and if you suspect leptin resistance and you have insulin resistance or diabetes as well, then I will tell you that losing weight can become very, very challenging, right? It can be very, very challenging to lose weight when a person is struggling with blood sugar issues or high uh, insulin levels, right? I've done several videos where I've talked about blood sugar problems as they relate to thyroid disease. Um, this is a great place to start because I review a lot of different tips that will help you stabilize your blood sugar when you have a thyroid problem, all right? Now, one thing I will tell you is this, is that if you're insulin resistant, in other words, if you've had your fasting insulin levels done and they are greater than six, this might be one of the very first things that you need to address uh, in order to help you lose weight and stabilize your blood sugar and of course stabilize your thyroid, right? On the surface, the solution of weight loss always seems that a low carb diet and skipping meals and, and taking thyroid hormones is the answer. 
But I will tell you that this often easily backfires on patients. I've seen this over and over again, right? So again, keep in mind that thyroid disease is very complex. There are many facets to understanding the thyroid gland. It's not simply just dumping uh, more T4 into the body or, or prescribing more T3 uh, for the body because your levels are low. It's about really understanding why those levels are low in the first place, right? And this is where the insulin resistance, the leptin resistance all play uh, a, a part of that equation, right? With patients, I like to talk about the big picture, right? Each and every one of us has a unique big picture, right? Figure out what that big picture is and what it looks like. That's the first step in correcting your weight gain. It's the first step in correcting leptin resistance, insulin resistance, and your thyroid disease. Now, if you feel like you've hit a dead end and you just feel uh, stuck, right? Visit my website and look for the Start Here tab, right? I have a team of professionals that can help you get on the right track, help you lose weight and feel good again, all right? So there you go. Till next time, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.